Hello my soccer universe! Match day 3 of the European qualifiers for Euro 2024 is in the books and Scotland look like they are set to join the party in Germany already with another huge win. After beating Spain they went to Norway and beat Norway away from home, thus boosting their chances and completely uh, <laughs> annihilating any chances that Norway thought that they might have in this group. Remember when we started out we thought that Norway are pro potentially the second best team in there, hasn't started out well for them at all. Also my native Austria is on a very very good course getting a teeny bit lucky but overall very credible draw in Belgium uh, in an absolute mad game. I mean that was ball chasing left and right. It was a fun game to watch too to be honest and you can see some excitement building around the Austrian national team and Ralf Rangnick. Uh, it's a very, very offensive style and I'm all here for it. To see that, I remember saying yesterday to, to my wife the game started out well and it's bound to end in glorious failure, almost, but they also could, could have won it. And this is the beauty of it, it's really, really exciting. But yeah, um, I think austria Belgium probably was the biggest clash of them all, although I don't want to discount uh, Portugal against Bosnia and also then, I mean, we had Scotland, Norway as well. So those were pretty big ones there. Most of the big nations had rather, um, how to say, small opponents. So yeah, I would say we'll jump into it. I did see a few highlights here and there, but uh, it was kind of busy and I mostly saw games. Uh, I, I saw I followed three games overall, but you know, I'll see what I can muster up uh, to review those. And I want to start with Finland's big 2-0 win over Slovenia, putting them in a pretty position in Group H to qualify already. Uh, Switzerland 3-3 three for three with a win in Andorra. I mean 2-1 is nothing to uh, brag about, but a win is a win. Same thing goes for Israel in Belarus. Uh, Denmark, one would say only a 1-0 over Northern Ireland, but again, you get the points, move forward. That's all that it counts. Although I have the feeling that Denmark is at the moment a little bit on a downward trajectory, but never count them out. Uh, France against Gibraltar. Yeah, 3-0 sounds a little bit disappointing, but they also hit the woodwork thrice. Uh, Olivier Giroud in the third minute and Kylian Mbappe with a penalty just before the half and then it was an own goal. But as I said, the score that could have been higher on the other side. You don't want to really exert yourselves either if you're France. The way bigger game was definitely Greece against Ireland for a chance to stay in contention and put some pressure on the Netherlands. Well, Greece did it. Greece actually played overall well, controlled most of, of the game, got the lead through Bacassetta's penalty. Collins then with the first chance for Ireland equalized, but there was always Greece having more and then Masuras a really nicely played ball from Bacassetta and the way he calls it into net in 49th was already the winner. Probably should have been higher too, to be honest, and uh, at the end Doherty is sent off. But Greece having a slight resurgence, maybe it is hard to qualify from this group, but I can see Greece maybe going through the playoffs because that spot they have already secured. Uh, Kosovo, Romania, goalless draw. Uh, Turkey had to really work hard at lowly Latvia to get the 3-2 win. However, as we will see, it's a big win overall and they are showing up there as one of the biggest improvers uh, in this campaign. Yes, they had thrice the lead. However, in the 94th minute, uh, they uh, conceded an equalizer against a 10-man Latvia, only for Kavici uh, getting then two minutes later the winner for Turkey. A uh, really, really, really hard fight. Um, uh, Gold did it this lot, but this was a, this is a big three points for Turkey in the overall picture uh, because of other results in the group which we get to. Um, England cruising over uh, Malta, uh, TAA, Kane and Wilson, Callum Wilson with a penalty scoring after an uh, up up own goal to start the proceedings. Another big win for Ukraine also over Northern Macedonia uh, coming back from a 2-0 deficit at the half. After getting a draw in Germany, I think Ukraine is a good point and I think they could cause trouble to Italy. That we have to see. Uh, England in the, in the group seem to be going through. Uh, Kazakhstan 2-0 at San Marino again. But then I think the boom moment, and that's why the Turkey win is so big. Armenia going to Wales and winning their 4-2. 
One nil down after 10 minutes, two one up at the half. Three one up. Wilson pull, Harry Wilson pulls one back and then Silarian in the 75 seals the deal, Wales uh, being uh, con con conceding a red card. Huge result, putting a big spanner in Wales' hopes to qualify for another for another Euros. Uh, probably not going to happen with that result and with Turkey uh, running strong in that group as well. Then uh, I saw a bit of Lithuania against Bulgaria. Uh, Bulgaria playing for most of the time with a man more, however, um, not getting uh, proper speed behind their play. Lithuania had had, had the lead. Bulgaria equalized. Luxembourg 2 0 over Liechtenstein. Uh, in Austria's group, Azerbaijan and Estonia 1 1, so no chance for them to qualify. I have to say, Hungary, Montenegro 0 uh, 0, kind of a bit disappointing. However, then we had the big one. Scotland winning it late in Norway, a game that Norway largely controlled. I mean, Holland had a few, well, wanted to have a few penalties left, but that way he got one in the 61st. But um, it was mostly, you know, it was not the greatest of matches from what I could say from the highlights. Uh, however, Norway did have a little bit more control of it. They took the lead through Holland. However, very late on, Linden Dykes in a... It was a counter-attack from uh, Scotland with four passes, nothing really fancy, but you know, straightforward. And then the last one to go to Dykes was um, assisted by Novinovic and he put, he, he, he put it in. And then Dykes also assists McLean two minutes later to give Scotland a 2-1 win. And we will see what huge result this was for Scotland because they are looking very much set to qualify for Germany next year. Albania had a 2-0 win over Moldova, and then I already said an absolutely crazy game between Belgium and, and Austria. And if you look at the, uh, at the coach, this is Red Bull, both sides, the Red Bull school of playing it. Uh, we have it for Belgium, we have it for also, also Austria. And I have, have to say, well, probably the Austrians are harder working. You could see it every, that the Belgians have a lot, uh, have, have more class than the Austrian players, which made for a really, really interesting game that was for 30 minutes, I would say, Austria were, had good control of the of, of the game and took the lead through a rather lucky goal, uh, where from a corner kick ball for also Gregory, who wants to pull, pull it in, and then Mangala wants to clear it with his heel and deflects it just a smidgen enough that it counts as an own goal and that Courtois could not get to it. Uh, but, but but it was, was a free goal. I, I, I actually thought that Austria, if they were a little bit more precise in the passing up, up front, they could have scored probably two goals. But after it was 1-0, the game got a little bit more settled and then Belgium took over and especially the guys of Doku and Carrasco caused hammock in the Austrian defense with their individual skill. They had Lukaku mostly under control in the first first half, but they never could get uh, like Luke Bakio, Doku and... Um, uh, Carrasco, they could never get really under under control. Big chance for Luca Bacchio to score the e equalizer. Misses just by a hair. And the second half starts the same as the first with really, really good chances and loads of pressure from Belgium. However, with some luck, Austria could have made it 2-0 uh, if Anatovic wouldn't have been offside and if Courtois wouldn't be such a great goalie. However, the equalizer then came uh, when Luka Baku plays it onto Lukaku from outside of the box. Uh, really good strike. Th th threats is through a few, few defenders of the goalish lager. Had, had a chance. It's 1-1 one, one. at that moment. I said, oh yeah, this is not going to end well. However, credit for credits too. The changes for Rangnick actually, actually work. He brought on a Sabitzer for Arnautovic, who basically tried to be too fancy at times. Uh, Mvene, he took a pull down for Weber, who was already on a yellow. Um, and then also with Kainz, he brought a lot of, not only a lot of um, similar quality, but also a rather offensive changes. And Austria had their chances, especially if Posh can convert and get it past um, um, a Courtois, or then there was a good chance by Sabitzer. There was a period around between 70 and 80 where Austria actually really created chances. Uh, the last few minutes again belonged to Belgium. And yeah, there were some nervy moments and especially when Tillemans hit with the last shot of, 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 of the game. The corner of the goalposts. Um, yeah. In that sense, it, it, it was lucky, but I think on the balance of the, of the play, yes, as I said, I could see that Belgium has the better players. 
However, I thought that the team for Austria was better for most of the time. And yes, if a team was putting pressure, it was Belgium. Maybe in this sense, I can see if, Bel if Belgian fans say, yeah, this was maybe a little, an unlucky draw. And it was in the aftermath of the game, many Austrian players said, yeah, it was a little bit lucky, but we worked hard for it. In that sense, we deserved it. And I think this is the best way to describe it. Austria had the chance in what I really, really, really liked. And it was 1-1 and Rangnick did not go for securing that point, no. He wanted to get that win, and so did Tedesco. And this made for an exciting, exciting, exciting game. I'm all here for it. Um, Georgia, no. Kvitscher, uh, Kvaratskhelia, Kvaratskhelia, I think is his, uh, how, how, how it's called, uh, goal, but 2-1 over Cyprus, and Georgia remain in the running in another crazy group there, ahead of Norway. The Czechs beat the Ferry Islands 3-0, yep. Slovakia with a smash and grab win against Iceland. Iceland controlled most of the game. Found themselves one another, get the EQ equalized, and an absolute freak goal uh, where the Icelandic defender wants to clear and hits a Slovakian defender that uh, goes in, 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 in into the net. Absolutely crazy, 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 crazy win for Slovakia that was, I don't think, very much deserved, but hey, three points. And then Portugal, yes, Cristiano is still playing. Game needed a while to get going. Actually, a uh, minor chance from uh, Bosnia, and then Cristiano scored, but it was an offside, as I called. Uh, however, re really nice pass by Bruno Fernandes on uh, uh, to Bernardo Silva, who just chips it over, and then Bruno Fernandes gets a double uh, to make it a proper scoreline, and there's no problem, I think, for Portugal qualifying this time around. I mean, Euro qualifying is never that hard. So let's look at the standings. We see Group A, Scotland, Georgia, Spain at the moment. Spain uh, having as many games as Georgia, however, having the loss. Uh, still very much the favorites to move on, but Norway is now in trouble uh, there. You see him that Scotland are expected to finish ahead of Spain. Not the main that again with a game more. Uh, Greece put quite some pressure on the Netherlands, who are still just above uh, in chances of qualifying. However, uh, you need to make up that difference. And yes, Greece will still have to go to France. And a similar story, I guess one can say about Ukraine um, uh, and Italy. The same situation, both have lost uh, to England. Uh, both got uh, wins. However, I think Ukraine's win was better than Italy's. So still a little, a little bit to, to go, but uh, Italy probably want to avoid the playoffs there. Uh, in Group D, Croatia now playing. So Turkey could take the lead. Wales is out of the... I don't want to say it's out of, out, out of the running, but it was a really, really hard defeat for them. You can see it on the graph how much this uh, slashed their chances of progressing. Uh, Czech Republic and Poland should get out of their group. Poland was not playing this time around, but that one is pretty much settled. I'm not sure if Albania will have a really, really chance to get in there. I think it's Austria and Belgium, but it will hinge a lot on the next match. Match this. Sweden uh, is just hanging in there, uh, but at the moment Austria do have the advantage over Sweden. I think Belgium will go through, and probably Austria too. The way they are, that they're playing, I think it's hard for me to see them uh, um, taken down by Sweden. But hey, we have seen other surprises. Uh, Serbia and Hungary very much on track there. Uh, neither Montenegro, Lithuania, or even Bulgaria can get anything going. The latter hurts a little bit because you know Bulgaria is a family team. Uh, Kazakhstan surprisingly, lead, but that group is really, really tight with four teams on six points. Denmark still in there. Finland also uh, probably the two that could could all get out of it, but don't uh, discount Slovenia. And Kazakhstan has a playoff spot, so they can play a little bit more freely. One would think Switzerland and Romania seem to be the class in that, that group. I don't think that Israel will get into it. And then the last one is Portugal. And then I think it's a fight for this last spot where I would actually slightly favor Bosnia, but it is not uh, a done deal yet. You also see the sample playoff draw uh, if the current standings were the final standings and also an expected playoff draw. It's interesting that the B and the, the B brackets are pretty much the same same but um then there are a few changes winners and losers we see turkey because of wales's loss not as much for their win but you know the combination swings things towards turkey scotland ukraine and finland are the big uh, winners and then where there are winners they need to be losers and those are iceland norway slovenia and of course wales who you see 25 percent chance loss of qualifying 
give you here also the upcoming games, pointing out just a few. I think France, Greece could be an interesting one, although anything but a France win would be a surprise. Uh, one would, would say then on the second page, Turkey, Wales, it's a pretty big one because that's the, the only chance for Wales to get back. Uh, then an evergreen Austria Sweden, a game that I've seen live already four times. There's no other opponent for all that I've seen more. Um, it's a big one for Austria uh, and for Sweden. So that's one to watch out for. A neighbor duel between Bulgaria and Serbia, however, I think it will be rather one sided. And then I honestly have, have to say Scotland against Georgia on Tuesday looks also rather interesting and only to see whether Scotland can back up uh, what they have done so far. But also Georgia, I think, is an underrated team overall. So that's it for me from match day three from the qualifiers so far. Please let me know what which games you have watched. Again, I actually enjoyed this way more and I cannot understand people that just sneer at this because the quality is actually quite good, better than some of the Champions League stuff that we have been seeing. Yes, it's not the highest, but it's rather in interesting and we have to give other nations also the their due step off your Premier League throne, if you might. In any case, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!